Okay, guys, welcome back to this session. And today we are talking to the one and only Matt Stone from 100 Covers. Matt, welcome to this. The segment. legend, baby. I'm in the house. The legend is in the house indeed. And we have, as you can see, screen sharing of the 100 Covers homepage because we are going to talk about everything all things and everything book covers. So our title for this um, session was cover design. So many authors do this wrong. So how can we sort of approach uh, uh, an eagle, eagle's eye view of, of uh, the problem and then go a bit deeper, Matt? Yeah, well, um, you know, thanks for having me, Brian. Awesome event that you put together. Thank you. And um, yeah, this will be fun. Um, like Brian said, I'm from 100 Covers. I'm the CEO there, and um, we do about 3,000 book covers a year now. And, you know, I, we say on the site, you know, mission accomplished. Um, you know, we built a successful book cover design team, and uh, we've made customers really happy, 5.0 stars, reviews, you know, all that kind of stuff on Google. But you know, that wasn't really all that motivating for us. It's pretty easy. The, the book cover part is fun and you can get a good graphic designer can make something that looks really pretty and customers get really excited, blows their socks off. And, um, you know, it's pretty easy to make customers happy doing this. It's just fun. It's the fun part of publishing, which is why, why I ended up gravitating towards it. You know, I, I have a long history in publishing and this just seemed like the fun thing to, to, to focus on. So that's what, my focus is, but, you know, we're really motivated by getting people good results, you know, um, ad campaigns, you know, how do you get your book cover actually performing well in an ad campaign? How do you craft not just a good looking book cover? It's easy to make a pretty rectangle as we say, but, but, you know, actually making one that attracts the right type of reader and gets them to click and read more and, and, you know, make a purchase. That's a different animal altogether, and it's a very scientific process where we're, you know, studying all kinds of analytics, and um, we've logged, you know, over twelve thousand covers that we've done. We track the performance of all of them, so we're really invested in your results. We're really invested in you actually, you know, making money, making a profit, being competitive in the market in your genre, and I think that's the first mistake. And, and all that was not to be a big advertisement, by the way. I, I'm really just trying to set the stage here for the fact that most authors, they're, they're not really thinking so much about the market. And they're not thinking so much about, you know, what a book cover's role really is. You know, a book cover is kind of like a tiny, especially in the digital age where people are buying most of their books, at least self-published authors are selling the vast majority of their books online. Um, it's just a tiny little billboard trying to say, hey, reader of science fiction, look at me. I'm a science fiction book. You love books like me. Um, that's really all the book cover is supposed to do. And, um, you know, sometimes authors get really, really focused on what their book is about. They want to depict a certain scene on the cover and things like that. It, the biggest mistake is, is not, you know, thinking of the design from the genre. You know, we like to be designing for the genre. If it's a science fiction book, we're looking at the genre and trying to make you a book cover that looks like a science fiction cover. We're not so caught up in the minutia of what character did this and this scene at this point of the book. Um, it's nice for the, the cover to match the story in some way. We don't want to have, you know, a book, a cover that's got the Seattle Space Needle on it if the the book is set in Paris, right? But, um, you know, we obviously have to get that correct as well. But the main thing is that the cover design is for the genre itself and that it looks the part and looks right for the genre. Um, long story short, we're all about making book covers that look right, not necessarily just making one that looks pretty. Making a right book cover is much harder and uh, much more difficult and detailed than it is to make a pretty book cover. Yeah, because I think we're, I mean, at, at now we're past the point where 
you you used to be able to tell a self-published book from a traditionally published book i mean the audience the readers expect super pro everything and so <laughs> we we really have to put some thought in it but what is the what what would you say is your ideal client in terms of not not so much the genre but in terms of how they can prepare to um to when you ask them the questions of what what type of cover they want what what do you want to hear from from authors when they approach you well, my favorite customers are the ones who buy a book cover and then they just forget about it completely. We never hear from them again. <laughs> That's the best. Um, if you're that type of person, you know, absent-minded, you know, no memory, <laughs> make purchases online all the time and never even remember it, we want you. No, um, <laughs> we we really like authors to participate in the design. You know, that's always the big question I hear all the time is, you know, how much input should I be giving as an author yeah. into the design of the cover? And it's good for us to get information about what your book is about so we can understand that and not screw it up. You know, our goal always is to get it right on the first time as often as we possibly can, because the revision process is very inefficient. It takes time. It's frustrating for the author who has to keep typing long paragraphs, telling us what needs to be changed and why. And then we have to read those long paragraphs and make tedious changes to the cover and, it, and it's a mess. So. We like to get it right on the first try as often as we can. And so it's good to have information about the book and to know, you know, just to have a general sense so that we don't put something on the cover that's, you know, in disharmony with the, the book itself, the story itself. Um, kind of like the example with the Space Needle in a book set yeah. in Paris. Um, so we want to get some good details like that. Um, but Really, what we like to see from authors, the best information you can give us, and we've looked this up ourselves, and we know the book, you know, the book cover market really well ourselves also, but it still helps for you to do some legwork to figure out what are the best performing book covers in your genre and similar books to yours right now. Um, and we can talk a little bit about how to determine that, but... We love great example covers. That's really the most powerful thing. Well, here's a book. It came out a year ago. It's selling like hotcakes. I would love to, you know, piggyback on that success somehow by having a cover with, that has a similar look and feel so that readers who've read, you know, the million people who've read that book will recognize my book as being something really close to that. So that's what we're really looking for. And I think fundamentally that's the most important thing you can do as an author is research you know research is often um forgotten about um just a quick aside here with hopefully not going on too big of a tangent but you know i went to school for writing and um oh where was i speaking of tangents i guess i won't go on that tangents i completely lost my train of thought mm -hmm. um but oh yeah research i i used to um i went to school for writing and i i wanted to publish a book with, um, you know, a real publisher. And the first thing the real publisher had me do was all kinds of research. They wanted the market market research done, you know, prove to us that there's a market for the book that you want to write. That's step one. You used to have to write a query letter to a publisher and convince them that it had, there's a market for the book. And you point out details about, well, this book is similar and it's selling X number of copies. And this book here has, has been very successful. You know, that was important work that you had to do before you even wrote the book. Um, and self-published authors don't have to go through that anymore. And a lot of times they just want to sit down on their laptop and write a book. And they skip that whole research part. And they're not even really thinking so much about the market. So you want to be thinking about the market you're entering into. You want to do a lot of research. You want to see what's working now. And you want to try to follow the formula of what is a proven winner. You know, if it's in your genre and it's selling well, you may not like how the cover looks, but you may not even like the book itself, but um, you still need to stay fairly close to what is, I think it's a smart idea. You don't have to, but it's a smart idea to stay close to that um, and try to look like you belong beside that rather than go rogue and try to reinvent the wheel completely and design something in the genre that has never been done before. Um, that's really risky. 
because you risk a bunch of readers, um, perspective, perspective readers not being able to identify your book as their kind of book. Um, you know, just looking at these really quickly, these are fantasy books, you know, you see castles, you see <laughs> wizards, you see, um, you know, Pegasus type of thing, you know, flying wings, dragons, there's more castles, um, the, you know, symbols, and you can see it in the fonts and the color schemes that are used as well. All these things are trying to make a, a very obvious, almost cliche, but obvious statement about what type of book this is so that it sends a clear statement out there into the cosmos to the, to the readers of fantasy that they, they're able to identify that in a split second without even having any conscious thoughts. They know that that's their kind of book and it looks, in, it looks intriguing to them because they've read a lot of books with covers that look like this and they love them. So that's kind of. Yeah, and I think um, I'd like to go in a bit deeper on the research because um, something you said really uh, was really interesting, like not just bestsellers, but books that have been bestsellers for a while. So what do you, how do you approach the research? You know, if, if the author doesn't kind of guide you, how do you have the designers approach the research in general? Yeah. Um, well, one thing that we see a lot, a mistake that we see often, hopefully this doesn't take me long to find a book in here. Let's look up, uh, I don't know, where the crawdads sing. Um, give me just a second here to get to the, uh, bestseller list, right? So if we're looking at a specific genre, um, I'll show you some of the things that I look for that I think are really important. Come on, baby. So let's look at, let's get in this category here. Okay. So this is a very specific category, bestsellers in mystery, thriller, and suspense, literary fiction, right? So if that's your genre, let's say, and you look through here, the first thing you're looking for is just general tropes that you see in the genre. What kind of repeating design elements are you seeing? You're looking at fonts, you're looking at colors, and you're looking at images. You know, those are really the three things that comprise a book cover. And you're looking for things that are repeating. Um, you know, I picked this one at random. Maybe this is not the best because it is just a wide, wide diversity in this uh, category. But you're still going to be looking for that. You're still going to find books that have very similar comps to your own. And um, then you want to start looking at reviews, right? So once you've found uh, a few of the ones that, that you think are, you know, pretty solid and you're or at least you're starting to form a picture of what looks good. Um, next, you want to look at the number of reviews. So here you got 598 for number one, right? So what that tells me is this book just came out, but it hasn't been selling long enough to really prove that, you know, it's a, a seasonal, you know, or, you know, evergreen bestseller. So this book, all we, for all we know, it could have had a BookBub promo yesterday at 99 cents and it just changed the price to 599. That's why it's still in first place for all we know. We come to this book, it's got 35,000. Okay, well that's definitely a book that's been out there for a while. So what I would do is I would go and click on the book and see when this was published. And what I really love to see is stuff that's been published ideally in the last year, right? Because design trends change really quickly and design trends are created by what's successful, right? Um, I think of 50 shades of gray, for example, the most successful book and series that's been written in a long time. And the book cover was very plain and gray. And still there's this whole category revolving around it now called billionaire romance, which is a, you know, been steadily growing in popularity ever since that book came out. And if you look at what the book covers look like in that genre, they're still really, they're still really gray and dark. They're still kind of clinging a little bit to the design elements 
that were established by the success of Fifty Shades of Grey. And everyone who's having success publishing books in that genre right now, they're piggybacking off of the success of Fifty Shades of Grey. There's millions and millions of people who've read Fifty Shades of Grey and they want more books like that. They're still hungry for more books like that. And so you want to create a book, you want to write a book and have a cover that looks like that kind of book. How do you do that? You make it look kind of like Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean, it's <laughs> it's kind of common sense, but I think for authors, it's a little bit hard to be um, unoriginal or feel like you are just trying to get a little market share of, you know, somebody else's success. But as a self-published author, if you really want to make a, a living at this and have success with it in fiction, you probably need to be, you know, need to be doing that. This one, fewer reviews. This could be something that's very, very recent, right? That's worth a click. 46,000. This maybe has been out too long. You know, if something has too many reviews, it could be something that's been out too long. Let's just say hypothetically that we looked at this book and it was published six years ago. Well, that cover design is no longer necessarily relevant. So we want current best-selling books that were published like ideally within the last year that are very successful and seeing them high up in the bestseller rankings with a lot of reviews, but not too many is usually the best indicator that you found a really good comp cover to set aside as the kind of cover that, you know, you want your design to not copy. Nobody's talking about plagiarization here, but just create a similar look and feel so that an author can really recognize that. Yeah, and I think it's a testament to um, the pros that do this. So pro cover designers, when you are in genres like the one you mentioned, billionaire romance, I mean, there, there must have been, I don't know how many thousands of books and being able to still innovate a little bit or make something a little bit different really requires a pro because, uh, I mean, even if you're a graphic designer, you really need to know what you're doing in terms of book covers and also especially maybe in a series even that is i find uh, some series are very very difficult especially the ones that last 12 13 14 books i always wonder how does the cover designer find <laughs> a little element that can be changed between book one and two and three and four uh, to make this uh, to make this a pro cover essentially yeah yeah um yeah, that's another, I mean, just a little aside, I think, uh, I think a lot of times another mistake I see all the time is that authors are, are more concerned. I see this more in nonfiction than fiction, but they're a little bit overly concerned about their own brand, hmm. right? They're trying to brand the cover and make it look like they're trying to create uh, a look for their books that always looks the same. And, um, you know, until you're really successful, I don't think that needs to be a big concern. Focus on what other people are doing and having success with and uh, and kind of follow those clues to, to figure out how you can craft something similar and, and get in, get in on the action. And since you, you've been doing this for quite a few years now, have you ever noticed, do you remember of a specific case or have you, have you ever noticed a trend sort of going towards its end? And so a trend that has been very popular and then you suddenly see mm, maybe it's not, you know, the, the, in design, I mean, cover design. It's oh, yeah, not, all the time. Know, right. Yeah, all the time. It's, uh, it's really funny to notice those. Um, just looking through here, I would say that one d design trend that's a, a little bit on its way out is what I call the side stripe, right? I so, remember this, yeah. Yeah, this, this is something we started seeing pop up a lot of, you know, several years ago. Um, there's this little stripe on the right, and a lot of covers had it. And people were, uh, you know, big publishers were redesigning book covers and putting little stripes either on the left side or the right side. Well, since then, the stripe has gravitated almost always to the right side. And it's now usually adorned by number one New York Times bestseller. Right. Do you know why this is or why do you? Um, why yeah, I, I do know. Um, basically, the, the cover itself is unchanged, right? Mm -hmm. But they cut it off a little short, right? And then I'm talking about the actual physical copy, right? When you go into a bookstore and you open up this cover, on the inside, there's this just blue page. And oh, this yes. is all it says on it on the right side. So 
the actual cover comes a little bit short of covering the whole book. And then you just have this peeking out on the, the first page that's underneath the cover. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's just kind of a style that, it, you know, it's still big right now, but I feel like it's turned the corner and it's slowly, you know, gravitating, you know, slowly on its way out. But we'll see. We'll see how it develops. Obviously, this book is wildly successful, still selling really well. And it's got it. And mm -hmm. um, but again, a subtle psychological thing that, that we might do and I encourage my designers to do for a while was, hey, it's the number one New York Times bestsellers that have this stripe on it. Just put a stripe on it, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes we might write, you know, Amazon bestseller or something on there, but a lot of times just nothing at all. But it still has that subtle psychological effect of, for some reason to people, it looks like a successful modern hip book. And um, I see a little stripe here on the right mm -hmm. side that isn't. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really fun to go through and, and see, uh, and it's fun to watch the design trends as well. You see a little stripe here yeah. on a little life. I have this book. Uh, <laughs> I remember you I telling me this. Yet. What's that? Ma Margaret Atwood as well. I remember you telling me this and I still don't understand why they, they did that, but I kind of understand it on the physical copy because it may be once you go and open the book, the cover or something like that, because it looks, you know, uh, inviting with that shorter yeah, kind of narrower cover, but in eBooks, it doesn't make sense. So, um, really interesting. Right. Um, yeah. But it's crazy though. I mean, just looking through the top 50 here, we found one, yeah. two, three, four, let's see, four, five, yeah. six. Hmm. So six out of 50. So maybe. Maybe that's not on its way out. But <laughs> hold on, let me back. send a message to the design team. More side stripes, guys. More side stripes. Turn them out. Let's go. Go, 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 go. It's coming back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we look at design trends like that, and it's fun, and um, it's really great. You know, one book being really successful can really change how the design trends move, and it's fun to look and see. I know, I know where that design trend started. Mm -hmm. You know, I know the first book that had that, that started this craze. Um, yeah. so anyway, it's, it's fun to be, uh, kind of a student of book cover design and watch all the trends come and go, but it, it's fast moving. I mean, that the trends come and go really quickly these days. And uh, that's why I think it's important to find a book cover, you know, a book and look at the cover that was done in the last year. That's going to be, that's what's working right now. And, um, you want to be as current and fresh as you can so that you're, <laughs> you get more years out of your book cover before it starts looking outdated. Yeah, I, I also look sometimes at very, very, you know, old books that have been bestsellers for years and years. And I look at the rebranding they do and the new covers. And whenever a new edition with a new cover comes out, the old one, which was perfectly fine, looks so old in like the space of one day. Yeah. It, it instantly ages <laughs> the, yeah. the book. So. Cool. And what about any um, any case that you remember, case study of somebody who whose sales were a bit meh, and then they changed their cover and it had big big impact? Um, I can't remember any just right off the top of my head. What I will say about that is that first of all, I usually try to steer towards investing money in new books. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a book and it's been out there for a long time, and Amazon Ha, their algorithm has firmly established that book as a very poor seller. Just putting, just changing out the book cover alone is not going to suddenly, you know, the, the algorithm is not just going to just keel over in, in amazement and uh, start showing that book to everybody. Um, the process is, is uh, it's more like, you know, you start a new ad campaign, um, you know, maybe on BookBub or something like that, and you get a higher click through rate. And then you can maybe get that thing thought out, but it's still difficult to convince the algorithm that a book that hasn't sold for a long time is now the bee's knees. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I do try to steer people towards investing money into future pro projects, but obviously there's a lot of authors out there who have a book and it's the only book 
that they've written and they don't plan to write anymore and it's their baby and it kills them every day that that thing isn't selling. And if that's the case, yes, of course, you know, get a better cover for it if you think there's any weakness there whatsoever. But just in general, you know, I wouldn't recommend, you know, trying to swap out covers and expect miracles to happen, but it can with ad campaigns. So if you're a pretty sad, savvy advertiser, if you've got somebody who does that for you, Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you can you can definitely make uh, some little miracles happen with a with an improvement in book cover, especially if your book cover is really bad. Um, yeah. You know, Brian and I encounter uh, completely unmarketable book covers all the time. And, Unfortunately, um, yes. Yeah, you never want to try to sell something that has no chance of selling. That's a good way to throw money down the. Yeah, my, my rejection emails are sometimes taken very personally. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's you're, you're in the unfun part of yeah, yeah. the book industry doing some But book I do get people campaigns. say, um, I appreciate your honesty. So uh, <laughs> that makes my yeah. day. Um, cool. So another thing I wanted to ask you, which is the, the trend of... Uh, of design in general, not just book covers, which is obviously AI. What's your opinion on AI images, AI images for book covers? Are you worried about them <laughs> or what's your, what's your opinion? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, I see a lot of designers out there just, you know, hear the conversation and a lot of people are, uh, you know, they're like, uh, hey, this AI is really great. And, um, it, you know, it's a great new tool that we designers have to make even cooler designs. And, you know, I followed the, the AI issue for like a decade, um, not because of book cover specifically, just because as a human, I find this, this, you know, this futuristic uh, thing to be kind of an interesting thing to ponder, I guess. Um, but in my experience so far, you know, it's a great assisting tool. Um, but that could change, you know, that could change pretty quickly to where it, it just makes a designer obsolete altogether. Right. Yeah. If you could just tell AI, Hey, make me a really cool book cover that looks a lot like, um, 50 shades of gray with, <laughs> with a uh, stripe. With a yeah. Without, yeah. With the side stripe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Um, that doesn't, doesn't plagiarize that, but it looks like it belongs in the genre. If the AI was smart enough to, to um you know work from there and make you something really great then you know we'd be in real big trouble as as designers so mm -hmm. far the process of trying to guide ai to make you an image that looks like you want it to look is still really tedious um a lot of people are trying to kind of diy that which i think is a huge mistake because if you're not if you don't have any design experience at all Again, you might really get into, ooh, I can make this scene look exactly like what happened in my book. This is really exciting that you could still end up with a cover that looks totally wrong for your genre that's not going to sell your book at all, no matter how cool it looks. Um, it's not a book cover looking really cool that sells. Fifty Shades of Grey's book cover is not cool. <laughs> it's gray. Um, so there's more to it than just... Um, you know, like I said, depicting a really cool scene and expecting just because it looks good that people are going to just think that that's the coolest thing and click on it and want to read the book. That's just really not in today's modern publishing environment for self-publishers selling most of their stuff online. That's just not really how it works, you know. Um, like, I, I'm a simple man. I like reading stuff that's uh, set in the mountains, you know, cowboys, mountains, horses, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I see mountains, I click. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, most people are like that. You know, they see castles or swords or, you know, unicorns. They click because they read fantasy. Um, they see, you know, a dark silhouette of somebody like in a thriller. Uh, they see this dark silhouette. And I think actually, hmm. I just have one of Phil up here somewhere. Philip, where are you? There he is. <laughs> Sorry, second row. Out. Second row. Did? Second row on the left. Blood ties. Blood ties. That's not. That's not him. Oh, that is Phil Duck. You're right. Yeah. That's Phil. But yeah, you see this dark silhouette of a character. You know, you know, it's the kind of book that you like because so many book covers look like that in that genre, right? You know that this is kind of like a, 
I don't know, kind of like a, obviously a political thriller. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much. You don't have to reinvent the wheel to do anything. You just make it look like a political thriller and people who like political thrillers, you know, they can't help but notice that when they're browsing around for books. So it's just that kind of, uh, that kind of thing going on. And, uh, yeah, I mean, AI is not there yet where it's going to, you know, you give it some inputs and it creates you the perfect book cover. Mm. It's still a lot more involved than that. And uh, we're, it's a long way from us being obsolete. I think the, uh, one of the good things that it could do, or I don't know if it's there yet, is analysis and research. So loading up like a thousand, a thousand book covers from one genre and then having the AI analyze what is common, what isn't, and, you know, the colors and things like that. So that, that might yeah, help um, because, yeah. Yeah, I was going to bring that up because, you know, I have this, this tab loaded up for Klytics, but that's kind of what Klytics does. Yeah. And AI could, you know, probably do better than what Alex can do, but I'm sure Alex from Klytics will be incorporating AI as soon as, you know, it's to the point where it's really useful for him. But that's what he's doing here in these genre reports. This is a paranormal romance, and we're looking at ones that have a symbol or other. Well, 21% uh, are using the symbol, and that's an uptrend that's more and more common. A female on the cover, you know, that's 28% of a female, but it's, you know, it's a downtrend that's moving the other direction. These mm -hmm. genre reports that, that k Lix does are incredible. I mean, they're really incredible. We use them. Um, we're always making sure that we work from this because this is really the best intel that's out there other than, you know, us tracking our the performance of our, our own covers that we've done. And yeah. also, uh, you know, just seeing over the years how many things have responded well to the advertising campaigns that that we've run over at Book Ads or the book promotions that we've done at Buck Books. You know, we see, uh, we see a lot and uh, have a pretty good feel for what's working. But I mean, to see the trend, whether it's going up or down, um, you know, showing some skin is is hot in paranormal romance. It's up 22 percent and it's now 42 percent of the covers, you know, show some bare skin on there. Um, and then the colors that are used, I mean, just really, really cool reports. But yeah, AI could definitely um, take this probably even to the next level beyond what Alex has done, or at least make his life a lot easier. I bet he could churn out a lot more of these reports if um you know a machine was was his sidekick yeah cool so very very interesting um we often we often talk about book covers and i always find some new interesting insights i would i mean i'm i love nerding out on these things and i love to um just browse the best sellers and have a look at the covers and i know you do too so um, yeah I'm super quick, super quick, because yeah. AI, in my experience so far, the vast majority of authors do not want any AI on their covers mm. at all. They're worried about copyright issues. They've heard <laughs> all kinds of horror stories of things like that. Um, maybe they just have a negative bias against AI. Maybe they're like really sensitive to artists and they want to support real human artists and the thought of AI just disgusts them. Are you comfortable with the use of any AI powered tools or images in the design of your cover? We let you opt in or out of that. If you select yes, that doesn't mean we'll be using AI. It just means that the designer knows that if AI would be helpful in the crafting of that cover, um, they have the green light to, to incorporate it. Mm -hmm. So, but we've, we've used so very little of AI so far, actually. Um, but, you know, there's stuff like Photoshop has AI tools now. So Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, it's not just about using images. It's like this thing will, <laughs> it'll like do an effect on the, the image that you have really quick and uh, do a lot of the, the work that it would have taken you like an hour to do in Photoshop, clicking tediously. It'll just clean it right up or change the whole color scheme or do, it does other things. So there's AI tools that are not, you know, image generation that are taking some kind of, uh, you know, graphic designer's job, uh, there's, there's other things involved. So it's, it's getting, uh, more and more difficult to avoid it completely. Yeah. I would yeah, say, definitely. but we, we, we give you the chance to choose there. Cool. Very, very interesting. I think we are finished with this very interesting session. So any last words you want to 
uh, words of advice you want to give to our attendees? Um, I don't think so. That's it. Um, hopefully, uh, nothing I said offended you. I remember one time I <laughs> said something about authors, you know, always wanted to be original and someone got offended. Um, you know, I get it. It's, you know, when I first started and started publishing books, you know, I, I wanted my book covers to be original and look different from everybody else's. Just like I wanted my book to be original and different from everybody else's. But, yeah. you know, it's perfectly okay. You know, this book covers are not art, honestly. They're, they're product packaging and, and not even product packaging because so many people are buying digital books, especially from self-published authors that, you know, they're really just, like I said, a mini billboard. They're just a tiny little billboard. So I would say don't get it too attached to it. Um, really be thinking about what kind of cover image is going to assist you in selling your book, running a positive ad campaign, attracting the right readers and sending a clear message. Don't confuse them with your book cover. Make it clear. Hit them over the head with this obvious design that screams thriller or screams romance. And there's all kinds of subgenres of romance, but um, whatever your subgenre is, make sure that it is just absolutely clear in no uncertain terms that that your uh, your book is that type of book, and that's really the best way to attract the right readers and um, you know get a good conversion rate and start to tickle Amazon's algorithm the way that it likes to be tickled. Yeah, definitely. And I I never mentioned this on uh, on the sessions, but I have to mention that we do have a very very special deal by. 100 covers in our bundle so check it out if you need help this is the deal that you're looking for um and yeah we do um yeah we're, we're giving away a free ebook pack for everyone so it's our standard hundred dollar service with a custom kindle ready cover licensed fonts and images unlimited revisions and all that stuff of course a lot of people want to you know upgrade to get the print later and stuff like that which you can do that uh, it basically functions as a hundred dollar coupon that you can use for any of our three packages. But uh, we really want people that are really excited about this event and uh, opting in for the bundle to to really get something special out of it. And I think this is something that you'll really enjoy. And even if you never use it, at least you you get a great starting point and you get to see what we think based on the research you do and the research research that we do you know, what we think your, your cover should look like. So even if you just do it for fun, just to see, uh, you know, do that, take advantage of it. It's a, uh, it's a great offer we've never done before anywhere. So uh, happy to uh, let you guys test drive this, <laughs> test drive our, <laughs> our service a little bit. Great. Thanks very much. So guys, we'll put links to all of this around this video somewhere, probably below this video. So Matt, thank you so, so much again for being a guest a returning guest uh, to our event. Thanks, Brian. Shout out to Phil, uh, Philip as well. Yeah. And uh, great job with everything and proud to be part of it. Thanks. And guys, I will see you in the next session.